So a couple of years ago, it was at that exact time that my mom began showing signs of memory loss. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but those were the earliest symptoms of what uh, inevitably um, became a mysterious form of dementia. You know, after going around the country with her to various uh, neurology departments, I became basically unable to focus on anything but um, research and understanding to the best of my ability how diet and lifestyle may have contributed to what I was seeing develop in my mom. And I became really interested in what at the time was a fairly novel idea that nobody was talking about, dementia prevention. Certain forms of dementia, like Alzheimer's disease, which is the most common form of it, begins in the brain decades before the first symptom of memory loss, 30 to 40 years by some calculations, and some evidence suggests even earlier than that. And I realized that all this time I had been thinking of dementia as an old person's disease, and I realized that I was completely wrong, that dementia begins in the brain far earlier than the emergence of symptoms. Nutrition, what we eat, how we live our lives, this is something that I think we should all become experts in, without question. Well, I would say the biggest myths surrounding Alzheimer's disease and brain health in general is that we can't do anything to affect our odds or to change our brain health. AARP did a study in uh, 2015 that found that more than 90% of Americans believe that brain health is really important, yet largely are in the dark in terms of how to maintain or improve it. So most people uh, don't really know how to improve brain health and don't really understand that Alzheimer's disease is something that we can potentially prevent. I think probably the most impactful thing that one can do is um, practice a variety of different types of exercise. You know, movement is really good in terms of increasing blood flow to the brain, um, releasing uh, protective growth factors in the brain, like uh, something called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is sort of called by some to be the miracle grow for the brain. It helps fortify your brain with new brain cells. And in general, what's good for the body is good for the brain. Just moving um, helps to mobilize fluids throughout the body that don't have their own heart. And, you know, a perfect example of that is the body's lymphatic system. And it was recently found that the body's lymphatic system is directly connected to the brain. In terms of, you know, minimizing uh, exposure to waste products, flushing them through the body, movement is vital. Anaerobic exercise, so high intensity, you know, weight training, so important for men and for women. Um, high intensity interval training, uh, really important. Building muscle, building muscle strength from a hormonal standpoint is one of the best things that you could do to maintain your body's sensitivity to insulin. The same diet that's going to uh, put you at increased risk for depression and make you more depressed and more anxious. Um, this is not just about correlation, this is about actual research showing that you know eating a crappy diet actually affects the way that you think that's also the same diet that seems to accelerate brain aging and accelerate plaque deposition the same plaque that's related to alzheimer's disease um, and parkinson's disease it's one human diet when it comes to alzheimer's prevention it's not about just one food there's not a single food that's going to prevent alzheimer's disease for you but it's about the diet. It's about, you know, what you're eating day to day, how you're living day to day. I also want to be very careful in terms of misleading people. You could still do everything right according to the book and still develop Alzheimer's disease. We don't know everything about the disease. Um, and, you know, there could still be a to be discovered genetic risk factor that has a determinant effect. The most well-defined Alzheimer's risk gene that we know about is the APOE4 allele, and 97% of people that develop Alzheimer's disease develop it because of the interplay between that risk gene and the choices that they make in their lives. But there could be a, a to-be-determined gene that circumvents all of our best efforts. By doing everything right, we're helping stack the odds in our favor.